massive asteroid first discovered in 1983 is going to buzz by Earth next month, NASA has labeled the three-mile-wide asteroid as potentially hazardous. Bill Harwood is a space consultant for CBS News, and he joins us now. So, Bill, Phaethon, as the asteroid has been named, is expected to come about six million miles near Earth and within about two million miles of Earth's orbit. And that sounds pretty far. So why is this potentially hazardous? Well, you know, NASA has a classification, as you said, potentially hazardous asteroid. Any body that's bigger than about 500 feet across and its orbit carries it within about 4.6 million miles of Earth at any point in its orbit is classified as a potentially hazardous object, meaning over millennia, lots and lots of time, gravitational interactions with the outer planets you know, other objects in the solar system might perturb the orbit enough that it could actually impact the Earth. Now, in the case of this asteroid, that's not the case. They think this asteroid, and its orbit is very well known, uh, will never get closer than about 1.8 million miles of the Earth. Remember, that's much, much further than the moon, so it's not even a, uh, any kind of a threat at all over the next two centuries at least. Uh, but what you really worry about is way downrange, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years from now, could, could gravitational perturbations make one of these objects come our way? That's why they pay attention to them. I see. So how do astronomers and astrophysicists track these kinds of asteroids? What kind of work goes into determining if they'll actually strike Earth? Well, it's really interesting. You know, in the, in the past several decades, there's been a real effort by NASA at congressional um, instigation to go track down large bodies, bodies a kilometer across or bigger, that could have any chance of impact in the Earth. And so there are automated telescopes that do nothing but scan the skies and look for moving objects. In other words, if you picture a long exposure photograph of the sky, stars show up at pinpoints, but something that's moving in the solar system shows up as a small streak. And so once they find one of these objects, they, they will watch it for a period of time, analyze its orbit, and then determine, is this a potential threat or not, uh, and basically classify them. You know, we were Talking about potentially hazardous objects, there's somewhere between 3,500 and 6,500 of these bodies. Oh. Only about 10 to 30 percent of those are actually known. The rest are believed to be out there, but we haven't spotted them yet. Uh, so these automated observatories are working around the clock to try to track them down. Well, this particular asteroid is believed to be a parent body of the Geminids meteor shower, which is visible every December. What more can you tell us about that? You know, most meteor showers are associated with comets. You know, the comet is stringing material behind it, and over many, many, many years, uh, Earth will pass through the comet stream, and you get a meteor shower. You know, these are dust-sized particles that enter the atmosphere at extreme speeds and put on a pretty good light show from time to time. Uh, this is the same sort of a situation. They believe that the Geminids are believed to be uh, debris that's, that's uh, either been blown off the surface of this, this asteroid during close passes by the sun or through some other mechanism. Uh, but anyway, as you say, the Gemini shower is believed to be, uh, or, or rather it's believed to occur when Earth flies through the material that was shed from this body. And will we be able to see the asteroid itself? No, you need a pretty good sized telescope to see those. Mm. I've got some telescopes, but I don't think I'd be able to spot it. Uh, but certainly NASA is going to be watching, and I think uh, amateurs with, with serious instruments around may try to get a peek at it. Uh, but these are very dim objects. It's very dark, very small pinpoint of light in a very dark sky. Well, at about three miles in width, this asteroid is pretty big. Do scientists have a sense of where it came from? Well, you know, this, this, uh, this asteroid is one of what they call the Apollos. These are uh, asteroids that have highly elliptical orbits. They, they come from the asteroid belt. Uh, between Mars and Jupiter at, the, at their most distant point in their orbits and very close to the sun when the, uh, at the nearest point. So in this case, uh, Phaethon, uh, it's in a 300, I'm sorry, a 523 day orbit, meaning it takes 523 days for it to go around the sun once. At its maximum distance, it's about 360 million miles from the sun and at its closest, it's just 21 million miles from the sun. That's the, that is the closest, let me think about that. I think that's the closest any named asteroid uh, ever flies by the sun. So it gets very, very hot uh, when it's in there. And that may be uh, where, you know, it shed its debris. It gets so hot that, that, like a comet, some of this material could have been ejected into space during some of those close solar flybys. But the bottom line, we are safe. <laughs> For now. Absolutely. We're not, I'm not worried about this one. It's the ones you don't know about you have to worry about. All right. Bill Harwood, thanks so much. Always great to see you.